some years ago, I was at a youth retreat where they had now, a one of the great questions that people God the Creator should be obvious by these gentlemen. If you were looking down or Jesus from high lines of God the Creator. As we're considering the books of the Pentateuch, one of the really important ideas that develops in the early stages of the Bible is how does God go about to select servants, vessels, to accomplish his purposes? And uh, I'd like to read a few verses from Jeremiah 18, when Jeremiah is asked by the Lord to make a visit to the local potter and to watch what happens on the wheels. And so we read that he went down to the potter's house. This is Jeremiah 18 and verse 3. And behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. Now, this particular story, uh, the Lord is going to apply to the nation of Israel as his servant, but I'd like to think of it uh, in the personal level. This is a olive oil jar that was discovered at Hebron uh, from about 1200 BC, back in the days of the judges. And you'll see that it doesn't have a base. It would simply be stuck into the ground when it was not being uh, poured. and. Of course, pottery is ubiquitous in the land of Israel. You can find it everywhere. And in actual fact, archaeologists use the shape of the vessels uh, in, in order to establish dates. It's as good as finding coins because the shapes changed over time, just like our pottery changes. And so they're able to date their archaeological finds by the kind of pottery and the shape of the pottery that they find. Now, if you were going to be making something, simply some sort of little object to put on display, you, you could do that with one hand. But if you're going to make a vessel, you have to have two hands, and you have one hand on the inside of the vessel and the other on the outside, and you apply a little more pressure on the inside of the vessel to compensate for the pressure on the outside, and so you enlarge the vessel and prepare it for its service. The, the Lord uses this to illustrate how he works in the lives of people. And as we see Jeremiah looking over the shoulder of the potter, no doubt as he looked at the wheels, he just saw a, a lump of misshapen clay. But when the potter looks at the wheel, he doesn't see that. He sees a perfect vessel. Now the perfect vessel is not on the wheels. The perfect vessel is in the mind of the potter. And as he looks at that clay, that misshapen lump of clay, he begins to apply pressure in certain ways so that that clay more and more conforms to the vessel in his mind until you can't tell the difference between the two. And so the first great principle we have here is the purpose in the mind of the potter. God has a purpose for his people. And the writer to uh, the Romans, uh, the Apostle Paul, explained to them that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord, to those who are the called according to his purpose. And what is the purpose? The very next verse tells us it is to be conformed to the image of his Son. And so God uses a whole set of array of circumstances, of pressures. It may be financial reverses or uh, physical pain or family troubles or persecution, whatever it might be, a combination of these pressures that he brings to bear on each individual believer to custom design our lives so that they reflect the glories of the Lord. So we not only have the purpose in the mind of God, we have the pressure of the hand of God. And David talks about the two hands. He talks about the external pressure, the outward hand, when he says, my times are in your hands. And God uses our times, the people around us, the circumstances, to keep us on the wheel, so to speak, to keep us from flying off in all directions. We have responsibilities that keep us 
stable and keep us in a place where God can mold us. But secondly, there is the hand that works on the inside. And the scripture says, day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. Not only the outward hand of circumstance, but the inward hand of conscience. And this hand enlarges us through pressure. So as we think about God working in the life of an individual, sometimes we'll see people who are crushed by the burdens of life, the circumstances of life. This is because they won't let God get his hand inside. And so what may appear to be something that would absolutely devastate a person can end up being that which enlarges them, gives them a greater capacity to know God and love God and serve God because now they can comfort others with the comfort with which they've been comforted by God. But thirdly, there is the patience of the heart of God. We read that as the potter worked, the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. Now it doesn't say that he marred it, of course, because this is supposed to be an illustration of God working with Israel. Nonetheless, when the vessel was marred in the hand of the potter, it doesn't say he threw it away. In spite of Israel's rebellion and stubbornness, God's objective was never to throw Israel away. But he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. I mean, I'm just so glad to read those words, that the Lord was willing to take up Israel and make them again. I'm so glad that he took me when I was marred in his hand, and he was willing to work with me again and make me again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. And so as we think about this important idea, how God is not stymied, he is not neutralized by our failure. In the next section, we're going to be thinking about the hardening of Pharaoh and the discussion in Romans chapter 9, where he talks about the vessels of clay and how God selects vessels to accomplish his purpose. So I trust the Lord will help us as we think about this, but just in this little devotional thought, if you're under pressure today, if you're feeling uh, the, the circumstances of life encroaching upon you, try to understand that behind that all is the hand of God, behind the hand of God is the heart of God, and he's only doing what's necessary to bring us into conformity with what's in the mind of God, and that is to make us like his own blessed son.